So this is part two of histamine intolerance causes and cures. In the first video, we talked about some of the genetics behind histamine intolerance. And in this video, we're going to jump into some of the digestive issues that trigger histamine intolerance and histamine overload, and also some of the dietary factors, environmental factors that leave your body with too much histamine and the inability to break down or get rid of all that extra histamine. But before we jump into that, please read this disclaimer. The third cause of histamine intolerance that we want to look at is related to digestive problems. More specifically, the microbes that are present there, and there's two in particular, or two key topics that we want to look at with regard to this, and that's bacterial overgrowth and also fungal overgrowth. First, let's look at the bacterial overgrowth or SIBO situation. So SIBO, also known as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, is characterized by an abnormal abundance or too much of specific types of bacteria in the small intestine. These bacteria, whether or not you have SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or just a bacterial overgrowth in general, as part of their normal metabolic process, are going to generate histamine and actually other types of amines just as a normal part of their everyday working life and metabolism. Normally, our bodies are equipped to actually eliminate and sweep up some of these excess amines and particularly histamine and degrade these substances through the enzymes that we already discussed, plus some other ones. With SIBO or bacterial overgrowth, there is an excess production of these amines, in particular histamine, so much so that the body actually can't keep up with that production and resulting in an accumulation of the histamines and also leading to that increased resonance time that we talked about already. So of course, histamine plays important roles in specific things like your immune response, and it also has an effect on your neurotransmitters. There's also GI effects of histamine and acid secretion, and it's also involved in different inflammatory process. So its levels in the body should be tightly regulated, and we don't want an overabundance of histamine. We actually don't want too little histamine either, but with things like SIBO or bacterial overgrowth, you're getting that excess amount of histamine produced, and the body isn't able to keep up or stay regulated. In addition, there's also other amines that are produced by these microbes like putrescine and cadaverine, which are basically eliminated through similar enzyme pathways and further increase the resonance time of that histamine and further increase those symptoms of histamine intolerance. One would think we could simply just measure the levels of histamine in other amines in the body and just determine if this is going on, but that's not always easy to do. And quantification typically involves measuring the amount of histamine in your serum or plasma in your blood. But histamine is quickly turned into other molecules that are related to histamine. But because it's changed so quickly, the levels can be difficult to track in the blood. That's why you'll sometimes do a urine test instead. And so elevated histamine in the plasma definitely suggests a problem, but a low or normal level doesn't necessarily rule it out. And just because you have an elevated histamine wherever it's coming from doesn't necessarily mean it's coming from SIBO or bacterial overgrowth could be coming from many other things but addressing SIBO or bacterial overgrowth when present will definitely reduce the histamine in your body and help your body deal with the overall amine load that your body has been dealing with. Treatment strategies for something like SIBO or bacterial overgrowth include taking specific antibiotics and specific antimicrobial herbs that help reduce the amount of bacteria specifically in the gut. Also doing a low FODMAP diet can help reduce the amount of fermentation or the amount of histamine that's being produced because you're reducing the amount of substrate for those microbes to create those histamines and other amines. Another microbial problem which we mentioned is related to fungal overgrowth, and this is sometimes referred to as CFO, although CFO is specific to the small intestine, and we can have fungal overgrowths in a lot of different parts of the digestive tract. In a similar way, CFO or fungal overgrowth is going to lead to an increased production of histamines and other molecules that the body has to detoxify and eliminate. Sometimes CFO or fungal overgrowth will create more histamine internally produced by the white blood cells and create more of a problem with histamine symptoms. Managing CFO or fungal overgrowth really is mostly related to giving antifungal, herbal antifungals, and dietary changes and also 
prescription antifungals to help reduce the overall volume of that fungus, as well as some other methodologies. With those treatments, there's going to be an overall decrease in the body's production of histamine and the amount of histamine that's floating around in your body. So the last topic that I want to cover with regard to causes of histamine intolerance is diet and environmental triggers. So as we mentioned, histamine is something that has to get broken down and eliminated from the body. And classic histamine intolerance has more to do with the inability to break that histamine down. So along with some of the more classic causes of histamine intolerance, we want to also look at some things that are going to also cause you to have more of a problem with histamine intolerance and histamine symptoms in general. And that's where diet comes in. Certain foods are going to have higher amounts of histamine naturally occurring in them. And also some foods are going to cause more release of histamine within your body when you consume those. So foods that are particularly high in fermentation or have been aged for longer periods of time, these are going to be things like cheeses, fermented foods like sauerkraut, yogurt, and of course alcohol would all kind of fall into this category. The thing to remember about foods and how much histamine is in it is that they're not always going to be the same. No two tomatoes are going to be the same, kind of depending on how old that tomato is, where it was grown at, and the specific species of tomato. All those things can influence the amount of histamine that's present, but you don't want to drive yourself nuts with trying to figure out which tomatoes you can eat and which tomatoes you can't eat. Generally speaking, there's lists that you can follow that have low histamine and high histamine foods. And of course you want to remove or try to limit those higher histamine foods. Those people with histamine intolerance or high histamine symptoms in general, eliminating those foods or at least minimizing those foods will help reduce the amount of symptoms that your body is going to have because it's generally going to be more burdened with breaking those histamines down. Even if you do follow some of the suggestions like taking supplements that I mentioned, not necessarily going to be the same as if you have a normal functioning enzyme like someone that doesn't have those genetic alterations. So adopting a more low histamine diet can definitely help you manage your symptoms. And then maybe once in a while you can still have those foods and not have so much of a issue with the high histamine symptoms. While the general assumption with histamine intolerance has to do more with diet and the foods that are creating some of those histamine symptoms and inability to get rid of all the histamine. There are also other environmental things that are going to influence the amount of histamine in your body as well. So the things around us in general are going to play a role in the amount of histamine that's getting into our bodies and the amount that our bodies are producing. And when it comes to histamine intolerance, there are certain environmental factors or things that can exacerbate your symptoms because your body is making more histamine from an allergy or something like that. So pollen and dust, mites and animals can definitely cause your body to make more histamine if you're allergic to them. Mold is a commonly overlooked problem for some of these higher histamine symptoms or increased allergies, and they can trigger those increased immune reactions Reactions to various things that you're eating or interacting with and start to think you're just more allergic, but maybe it could be, you know, some sort of leak that's going on that you're not aware of creating mold. And so that's something that's important to look at. Another thing is exposure to volatile organic compounds or VOCs. These are basically the chemicals found in paints and cleaning products and some different aerosolized things that we smell. Like basically if it has a smell to it, it's going to have some of those compounds in it and they can stimulate the, the release of histamine. And some people are sensitive to those things, creating more histamine in their body and increased histamine symptoms. Certain medications can also affect the enzymes that break down histamine like the DAO and HNMT. These are things like antibiotics and NSAIDs, even certain antidepressants presence can sometimes have that effect on histamine metabolism as well. So as you can see, histamine intolerance is definitely multifaceted and there's a lot of different things that can influence your ability to break down histamine, digestive issues, diet, genetic problems, problems interfering with detoxification capacity, and understanding the various connections is going to help you target in on what intervention is going to help you alle alleviate or eliminate some of those symptoms most efficiently and improve your overall health by reducing the histamine levels and getting back to a more balanced state. And so really you want to focus on finding the cause so you can effectively manage the histamine intolerance. For some people, it's going to be pretty simple just taking the supplements that are going to help 
eliminate the histamines and other people it's going to be more complex involving more digestive support or maybe overall detoxification support in addition to helping support those genetics that are vulnerable in your system. But hopefully this gives you a better understanding of histamine intolerance and the causes of histamine intolerance specifically. If you do have questions about anything that's in this video, drop those in the comment section. If you want a more customized, detailed answer, consider joining the membership program. We'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your questions. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.